Hi everyone! Welcome again to Indian Story Read Along. Today's story is going to be an awesome book that's based on a true story. This is called Grandmother School and this is about what do you think grandmother school is? What do you think? Is it where they learn how to be grandmothers at a school? Or do you think it may be a school for grandmothers? Let's read the story. We'll find out. This is Grandmother School by Rena Singh and Ellen Rooney. Hurry up, Aji, I tell my grandmother. I know she doesn't like being late. She rushes through her chores so she can change into her uniform, a bright pink sari. She checks her bag for her abacus, reader, slate, and chalk. She looks into the little mirror on the wall and freshens up the red dot on her forehead. Look at that. Look at grandmother's slate. That's the old-fashioned tablet. Aji's grandmother in Marathi. So you know that this takes place um, in uh, the middle of India, maybe a little bit outside of uh, Mumbai. There they are on their way to school and all the other little children back there, they're all taking their grandmothers to school. Isn't that lovely? Then I take her hand in mine and I walk her to school. Her school is a one room bamboo hut at the end of the mango grove. It has a thatched roof, that means it's made out of straw and hay, and the mud floor is covered with mats for the grandmothers to sit on. The door is decorated with marigold garlands, and inside there is a big chalkboard. The grandmothers sit in rows, ready to practice the alphabet on their slates and show their work to the teacher. Look at all the grandmas. Aji started school a year ago. My teacher said almost everyone in the village could read, write, and count, except for all of the grandmothers. So he built Aji Baichi Shala, Grandmother's School. Ajoba, my grandfather, shook his head and said that learning at this age was a waste of time. But most of the people in the village were happy for the grandmothers. There they are, the grandfathers. And think about it. Grandfathers can easily say, oh, it's a waste of time to learn at this age because they were sent to school as boys. Girls back then were not given the chance and many girls today are still not given the chance to go to school. So it's a very important thing. When Aji first learned to spell her name, she did a little dance. Then she went to the bank. The rude man behind the counter had always dismissed her, saying people who give thumbprints instead of signatures have to wait. He made her feel small. Now I'll show him I can sign my name, she said. Look at the look on Aji's face. She's like, yeah, take that, buddy. <laughs> In the evenings, we huddle together, share stories, and do our homework. When Aji needs help, she whispers in my ear. She doesn't want anyone to know she's having trouble. There, they're doing their homework, and then everyone else is around there. In one year at Aji by Chishala, she has learned the alphabet. She can read and spell many words. She is so proud and that she can even add and subtract. And there she is. She's buying something. It looks like she's buying coconuts from a local seller and she knows exactly how much money to give. And there she is. Awesome. One day, one of the grandmothers fell ill and the others weren't able to pay attention to the lessons. So the teacher let the grandmothers worry and pray together. That night, Aji hugged me a little tighter and said, when I die and my creator asks me what I did with my life on earth, I'll say I learned to sign my name. 
But Aji, I reminded her, you can also read words like cloud, sky, rain, tree, mango, water, bird, hill, river. Yes, and I'll take all those words with me to the next world. On days when Aji falls asleep before me, I can hear her chanting rhymes in her sleep, the ones the teacher has asked her to memorize. I am so proud of her. Most days after the evening meal, she tells me stories before I sleep. My favorites are about the warrior king who was brave, kind, and clever. The king, Shivaji, was courageous and won many daring battles, but he never hurt those he didn't need to. So this is how they used to tell stories before. Remember, Aji can't read. So she's not reading anything from a magazine or from a book. This is called an oral tradition, where they tell stories and remember them just from retelling, from generation to generation. I especially love the story where King Shivaji escaped from a prison by hiding in a large fruit basket, outwitting Aurangzeb, the cruelest emperor that ever ruled India. No matter what story she is sharing, Aji always ends with the same line. One day, I will read you this story from a book. But not tonight. Tonight, I have already drifted into sleep, dreaming of warriors and birds, numbers and words. And that's the end of the story. But look, there's more. Here is a cool map of India that shows you kind of where everything is. When you see that camel up there, that's up in Rajasthan where the desert is. There's the Taj Mahal kind of in the upper middle. And then here you will see where it says Mumbai, like I mentioned at the beginning. That's where the real grandmother's school is. And that's where she's pointing it out. This is a real story. So let's see what the author said. Author's note, in Pangane, a remote village in India about 77 miles, 125 kilometers from Mumbai, there is a school just for grandmothers, the Aji Baichishala. It was the creator of Yogendra Bangar, a local school teacher who wanted everyone in the village to be able to read and write. He built the one-room school and invited Panganes 29 grandmothers to attend. The students are all over the age of 60 and the oldest grandmother is 90. Some of the women are hard of hearing and some of them forget what they have learned, but they all come dressed in their bright pink saris. They are excited to learn. Man, that makes me so happy. Their grandchildren walk them to school every day except Thursday, which is a prayer day. And for two hours in the afternoon, sitting in the scorching heat, they learn the Marathi alphabet, numbers, nursery rhymes, and new words. As children, these grandmothers watch their brothers go to school. As mothers, they sent their own children to school, but no one gave them a chance to go to school. In March 2016, they were given a chance and they took it. Like their warrior King Shivaji, these courageous grandmothers escaped the prison of illiteracy and no longer endure this shame. This really makes me so happy. And you know what? It has to tell you guys as young people that this is your grandmothers. This is my grandmother. They never went to school. And in fact, my mother, who was a young person only in the 1960s and 70s, she was only allowed to go up to about grade 12. And that's back when public education in India was free. And after that, they were just like, oh, we're not gonna waste money on you. We're not gonna waste money and send you to university. She really wanted to go to university and she was able to send me to school too. But she had a lot of chances also that her grandmothers never had. 
So I hope you learned a lot from this amazing book, Grandmother's School by Rena Singh and illustrated by Ellen Rooney. Thanks so much for joining us today on Indian Story Read Along. We'll see you again soon.